Hello and welcome back to the top 85 games for the BBC Micro video countdown series. In at number 5, it's Codename Droid, aka Strikers Run Part 2. Now, this was released in 1987 by Superior Software and it was developed by Nicholas Chamberlain and Martin Edmondson. And as the name suggests, it was a sequel to the very popular Strikers Run, which came out in 1986 from the same duo. Uh, but it's a very different game, so despite being a sequel, um, unlike Strikers Run, which we've already looked, like, looked at in this series so far, which is very much a run-and-gun style game where you basically blast your way to the end. Um, Codename Droid is rather different. It's an arcade adventure game. It's got a lot of puzzles. Uh, you have to figure your way through the game. Um, and it's a very complex game, as you can see from these wonderful hand-drawn maps, which appeared in the Electron User magazine back in 1988. You can really see how complex and involved the game is. And that's one of the reasons why I really love it. I mean, quite apart from anything else, the graphics for it are out of this world, quite literally. I mean, it's set in space um, and it's got a real story to it. And it's just a really immersive BBC Micro game. And I absolutely adore it. Uh, it's one of those games that I remember. I think I got it on the Play It Again Sam 2 compilation. I can remember playing it at my friend's house and just being really blown away by it. So uh, yeah, without further ado, we're going to dive in and look at Codename Droid. Okay, let's start it up. Yeah, so Codename Droid by Nick Chamberlain and Martin Edmondson. Now, there's a lot of instructions here which have been faithfully transposed by the excellent team at the Complete BBC Micro Games Archive. Um, these would have originally appeared with the, the pull-out instructions for the game, but um, I'm going to skip through these because I'm quite familiar with Codename Droid. I don't need to reread the instructions. Now we're treated to several splash screens. We've got this one here, which is excellent. I love the, uh, the text graphics there for the name of the game. Um, proudly displayed. But then after that we get this absolutely striking piece of splash screen art. I mean, absolutely brilliant. Superior Software really do knock it out of the park every time with these splash screens. And then on into the, the, the title screen. So just to show you, um, the controls are fairly involved. You can see we've got quite a lot of controls here, including for our wrist terminal. Um, more about that later. Uh, but for now, we're going to load the game by pressing space. Uh, you'll see yet another splash screen, an animated splash screen, uh, followed by some really spectacular music. Here it comes. Droid. And now we have this really, really wonderful um, music which has been put together for the game. I love the little ghetto blaster in the bottom right. It's playing the music. This is Commander John Stryker. He's just landed on the planet's surface of Volga. Uh, that's his spaceship up there. Uh, he can move around, he can jump. Uh, he's got a wrist terminal, which I can access here. And that shows us that uh, I'm on the surface defense in sector one. I've got three lives illustrated by my face there with a little three under it. My score is zero because I haven't done anything yet. Uh, I've got six mines and I've got two energy bars, one for my suit and one for my blaster. Um, suit energy goes down every time you get shot and blaster energy goes down every time you shoot, uh, regardless of whether you hit your target or not, obviously. Uh, the energy cells on the bottom right are zero. Um, I need more of those if I want to be able to recharge either my suit or blaster energy. Uh, I've also got um, that P with an arrow next to it. That illustrates how many lift passes or security passes I've got. Currently, I haven't got any. And if I press M for maps, I haven't got any available because I haven't collected any microfilm. But over here, there's a pass card. So now you can see pass card one. Uh, now the first thing to do is obviously dispatch this Volgan here, so we're going to just jump and he turns into a skeleton, which is a brilliant effect. That was actually in Strikers Run originally as well. I'm going to go down the lift here, um, and I don't actually have uh, any ability now to go back up because I haven't got any more lift security passes. You can see that's set to zero. Um, so that's it, I need to get through this level. Now I've got an energy cell here, which I can collect. And then I need to carefully go up this rope so I don't get too far up and get rid of him. Now I've took a few a few shots there so you can see my suit energy going down and obviously my blast is slightly down because of uh, having done some shooting. Now there's a couple of these guys here so what I'm going to do is pop a couple of mines here. 
that, uh, that will deal with them. Don't me having to use my blaster. Um, now we're gonna pop our way up here. And let's see. I mean, you can already tell that the graphics for this, are, I mean, they're out of this world. I know I said that in the introduction, but they really are. Um, uh, yeah, you can crouch, by the way, which is very important for menaces like this one, which if you were standing up, you'd be completely flattened at that point. Um, so being able to crouch and crawl. Ah, uh, there's some microfilm. So now if I go into my wrist terminal and hit M, you can see I've got this excellent map. And it's actually a rather intelligent map because it shows you the position of the Vulgans. Those are those little white lines, um, sort of standing up stick men. Um, but each time you kill one, uh, they disappear from the map. So uh, it's actually a very intelligent map. Anyway, there's another lift pass there, which I'm going to need. That helped me get off this level. And now here, if I just crouch down, I can fire without being hit, which is excellent. So that means that I don't have to waste too much of my blaster energy. Now we've got two more of these guys down here. So I think what I'm going to do is uh, deploy a couple more of the, uh, the mines. There we go. Let's pop those there. And then we can just stand here and wait for them to explode. There we go. There's the first one. And a few more seconds. That's dealt with that one. So now I think I'm down to just two mines. But the mines do recharge each time you use the lift. That's what you get in exchange for your uh, security pass. As well as being able to use the lift, you get a recharge of six mines. Um, now, I'm just shoot him in the foot that takes him out now you have to be very careful with this lift now I've only got one lift pass as you can see so I've got a choice I can either go up or down uh, and I have to hope that there's a lift pass at the other end because otherwise I'll be stuck um, so I'm not going to go up because I know that there are no lift passes up there but I'm going to go down oh, instantly into a duel with that chap and now we're going to slide down this rope and grab one of these security crates which, if I hop into my uh, wrist terminal, you can see now I've got two extra energy cells and six lift passes, which is rather splendid. Now what that means is I can go back to the old lift that I was in before and take a trip up here. And that means I can get the first of my plutonium rods. So I didn't mention that in the introduction, but the overall aim of the game is to collect all of the plutonium rods in order to be able to um, get in the spaceship, uh, sorry, infiltrate the Z11 spaceship um, at the end. So anyway, that's the first of the important things I need to collect. So I can go down and back into my duel again. So every time you enter a sector, even if you've killed somebody on a previous attempt, uh, you'll find that they return and respawn. So I'm going to go into the wrist terminal and have a quick look at the map here. So you can see this is the map level that I'm on. Got quite a few bad guys in the way and I need to get to that lift over on the other side because obviously the lift I used to get here doesn't have any further to go. Now the positioning of this guy is not great because uh, I'm coming up the rope with my back to him so I'm going to have to quickly... Now you hear that sound, that means that one of my energy levels is depleted or depleting, I should say. It looks like my suit energy is getting a bit low. So what I'm gonna do is recharge that. And you can see that's taken up one of my energy cells, but that'll take off the alarm and hopefully uh, give me a bit more uh, leeway to continue. Okay, so we've got a bad guy running around here. I think if we just pop that there, I could have probably managed that slightly better. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay, all right, let's... Uh, Let's get him. Now you'll notice that the further you get into the game, um, the uh, the more hits it takes to take out these bad guys. So I'm just going to come down here, and, and once again I have to go up with my back, which is not great, but that's how it is. Oh dear, that wasn't good. And he collided with my suit, so I'm going to have to recharge again there. Um, and now we'll come down here. Ah, oh, this is good. So they can't shoot me. But I can shoot them. And take them out, which is good. Now there's one of those items down there that I'm going to need. Ah, and now the first of the jetpacks. Jetpacks are excellent. They let you do this. And ooh, up we go. <laughs> yes, uh, now they've got their own. Um, got their own. Uh, hang on, there we go. Just 
dispense with that. Ooh, now, that doesn't look like somewhere I should go without a jetpack. So let's see what happens if I go further down. Ooh, there we go. This one's got a rope at least. Now the bad guys have changed, which is interesting. And we've now entered what I believe is the ancient shrine. So here we are. We'll just see where those guys have gone. They've obviously gone for a, a run somewhere. Okay, there we go. One, two. Oh, oh no. Oh dear, that was clumsy. Well, it took him out, but once again, it's uh, taking a dent in my suit energy there. Uh, okay, right, so there's that guy. Oh, there's actually three of them in total. No wonder. All right. Well, this is a definitely a mine job, I think. So we'll just wait for them to come back. There we go. One and two. Okay. Ooh. Ooh. Ooh, look at those gremlins. Ah, there we go. There's a key here. Not quite sure what I need that for, but uh, anyway, we'll pick that one up. Now, he's, this is interesting. Without a jetpack, there's no way I'm going to be able to get to that lift pass. So, let me just do a quick check. Ah! Oh. <laughs> I haven't got any lift passes left. Oh, what a wally. Ah. Oh. Well, that was very silly. I should have checked my uh, my lift passes before coming down to this level. Well, you know what this calls for in, a, in one of my videos. It's time for some creative editing. So uh, if you'll bear with me, uh, we will return uh, and perhaps try the level above uh, on this occasion rather than taking the foolish decision to come down to a level without having a uh, lift pass to get back up again. So stay with me and we'll be right back. OK, well, I've brought us back here because in addition to using the uh, security passes too uh, willy nilly, uh, I also discarded my jetpack. Now the jetpack is extremely valuable and you shouldn't just throw it away uh, if you've still got fuel left because um, it's how you basically complete the game ultimately. So let's get rid of this guy and we're going to get in the lift and we can still keep the jetpack uh, but I need to quickly get over here, uh, make sure that I get past all of this whilst still equipped with the jetpack and quickly get up here and across here and if you'll see look my jetpack fuel level uh, which is available from the jetpack computer um, it's not uh, it's not looking too too shabby there but I've managed to get where I needed to um, so I can exit my jetpack I'm gonna fuel up my suit energy because it's running a bit low uh, but I'm going to ignore the extra jetpack that you can see it would be a temptation to just dive in and take that but I don't need it yet um, so I'm gonna come down here and I'm going to try and do something which is, is quite fun if you, can, if you can get it timed correctly. I'm going to jump on this chap's head. He doesn't even notice I'm here. It's brilliant. I'm literally standing on his head and he doesn't know I'm here. What it means is I can go... Oh. <laughs> oh dear, oh dear. Showing off too much there. What I was about to say is it means that I can jump off his head and then shoot him from behind. But uh, anyway, I ended up killing him with my own suit energy instead. So uh, there you go. Uh, another excellent moment from Colin Hode Gaming. So, uh, we will continue through the level. You can see that the uh, the Volgans have changed. We're also actually in a slightly different zone now. You can see that it's changed to the Ancient Shrine Sector 1 thereof. So, um, I'm going to make my way to the Shrine. Uh, I think, actually, I don't need to go up that way. I can just go this way. That avoids having to... Oh, uh, no, wait, I don't think I can get the lift pass if I don't go up that way, can I? Right, yes, no, I do need to get rid of this one as well. So let's go up here and wait for him to come back so I don't uh, accidentally run into him. There we go. Right, so we're going to drop a mine and hide down here. Wait for him. There we go. That's taking him out. Fantastic stuff. Now, a little aside about this game, um, I mean, as you can tell, it's a, it is a really, really brilliant game and it is pretty groundbreaking for the, for the time that it came out. Um, I don't know how many of you are into DOS gaming as well as, uh, as, well as the Beeb, but there was a game that came out for uh, MS-DOS, ooh, let me think, sometime in the early 90s called uh, Crusader No Remorse. And I have to say, it, although obviously, yes, graphically it's a, it's a different game and the setup and so on is, is somewhat different. I personally think that it's um, it's got some kind of connection with this game because at least the gameplay mechanics, th things like leaving mines um, rather than shooting people, um, the general aesthetic of it, it reminds me very much of, uh, of, of 
codename Droid, I have to say. So uh, yes, if you've uh, never played that one, have a look at it, even if you don't end up playing it, although I would recommend that. Um, I think it bears a certain uncanny resemblance, shall we say, and I wouldn't be surprised if the inspiration might have been taken from this game. Anyway, um, I've now d got what I needed from this level, so I've now got three lift passes, which means I can now claim this jetpack, and I can use it to get back to the lift. I have to, again, go really quickly, don't waste any fuel, don't bother with dealing with that guy, because you don't need to. Get down here, uh, I think, in fact, I might go down here, Ooh. and let's see if I can, can I get up here, Ooh. can I get in here, get to the spanner, go on, nope, oh, that's interesting, it's not letting me go in there, oh dear, I haven't got very much fuel left, oh, that's a bother. Look at that, doesn't let me go through. I could have sworn that was how you got through there. Anyway, obviously not. Now we've got these rather excellent stomping pillars here, so I'm gonna to need to time this quite carefully. So we'll wait for the pillar to go down. And then we can get this guy. See, these red guys take three shots to dispatch, so it's a bit different from where we were before. Now, I don't need to crawl under these ones, but ooh, there we go. I just need to time it so that I don't get squashed, because uh, obviously that would be bad news for all concerned. Uh, and then we're going to dive through here, come down here. Hang on. Oh, there we go. Almost, almost got taken out. Now, I think... Do you think it's probably safer if I take them out with some mines while I try and get that lift pass, actually? So let's let's do that. Let's deal with those guys. So if we just uh, wait for him to come back. There we go. Right, that'll keep the coast clear while I try and figure out this. Oop. There we go. Lovely stuff. So I've now got how many? Two more lift passes there. That's not too bad. Uh, ooh, there's some kind of switch over there. Not quite sure what that's for. Ooh, hang on, hang on, hang on. Now we know how to deal with these ones from a distance. Okay. Oh, hang on. Have I run out of... I have. I've run out of blaster energy. There we go. Let's charge that up. So... And perfect. He's gone. And we've got another one there, look. Oh dear. Not getting him, am I? There we go. That's it. Turned him into skeleton. That's what you need. All right, okay. And one. And two. And three. There we go. Now, I've got my back to him, so let's just wait for that to clear. Pop a mine over there. I've dealt with him. Now, I'm wondering about that switch over here. Oh, there's another lift pass. Definitely take that. Yeah, I reckon I need that switch. I don't actually think it is a switch. I think it's something I need to collect. Uh, now, I'm going to get rid of him without... Ooh, he's going to shoot me as soon as I get, come off this rope. I'm going to charge up my suit energy prem primit <coughs> prematurely. Because I don't want to end up having to restart the level. So, there we go. Ooh, now I don't know which way to go, I'll be honest with you. So, let's let's go down. Um, because at least that takes us into the crew's quarters now. So, this is the... Uh, Getting further into the, the Volgan High Command, closer to the rocket, which is our ultimate uh, our ultimate goal, the Z11. Uh, I quite like the um, the graphics for this. It's uh, obviously the this is what the uh, the title screen was using these blocks as well, but uh, yeah, I like the sort of feel. It's sort of got a almost a sort of Star Trek Enterprise 1960s original series um, look to it, which I rather like. Ah, hello, a couple of henchmen here. Oh, goodness. Hmm, no, not too bad. Right. Well, he can't get me anyway because he's in front of a rope. But this chap definitely can. I don't know how you're supposed to get rid of him because... I, mean, <laughs> I can't climb up like that. That's not going to work. Uh, oh, I think I can, I can shoot through the rope. There we go take that walkie-talkie, I think it was. I have to say, um, I'm not entirely sure what all of the items are for. I know that the plutonium rods and the navigation ROM uh, are, are very much the required items um, in terms of completing the game, but I'm not sure what the other things are for. Um, 
It's been a while since, since I uh, did a full walkthrough of this game. Again, it's one of those ones I do have a vague memory. I, I can't remember if it was me that completed it or if it was my friend who completed it, but I've definitely seen the completion. I have vague memories of having to blow up a robot and something else. There's definitely something like that involved anyway. Uh, sorry, I'll probably take off that rather annoying sound. Charge up blaster and suit. I'm getting through my energy cells a bit too quickly here, but this is, after all, a review and I'm not planning to complete the game. And on that review point, I should say, um, it, it's hard to know what to sort of call out as the most impressive. I mean, I've already mentioned that the graphics are clearly very, very impressive, but it's got a very, very good soundscape. I mean, although it doesn't have music in-game, obviously you had that rather excellent music um, at the start. And on top of that, you've also got some very, very nice sort of tasteful sound effects. Well, this is interesting. There's a chap up here. I don't know, I've just got a pillar. <laughs> hmm. Well, that is interesting. I don't know how you're supposed to get through there, but I've just burnt through a few of my security passes for, for no reason, which is a bit silly. Uh, oh. <laughs> oh, I've done it again. I haven't got any left. Hmm. Well, that's odd. I don't know how you're supposed to get through that pillar, to be perfectly honest with you. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, that... I can't shoot it. What a strange level. Well, I've obviously done something wrong there, um, which uh, is obviously on, on me. So, um, yes, well, I think I might have to do another bit of creative editing. Uh, so uh, bear with me. I'll be right back. So, yes, we're back. And I think this is where my mistakes began, at least on the, uh, the last section. So what I failed to do was make use of this jetpack properly, because it's not just about getting out of the level. Uh, you actually need to use it to collect a key, which is what was missing from that uh, earlier section where I couldn't get past a pillar. So what I actually need to do is come down here. Uh, in fact, the only thing that I'm really interested in here is this pass key, which I can only get, obviously, with a jetpack. Uh, and then I need to get this key here, which was the missing ingredient. And, oh, hang on, let's see how much we're doing on, oh, he's almost done, isn't he? So I think my jetpack is about to, yep, fail. How am I doing energy-wise? Doing not too bad. So we'll wait for these chaps to uh, come back. There's one and two, and then I'm going to mine them because I don't want to waste too much more energy. Let's get back up here, out of safety. And hopefully we will hear the definitive skull crunch, another excellent feature of the game. Uh, but as I was saying in the introduction, I mean, this is the uh, the remarkable thing about Codename Droid, uh, you know, besides the graphics and the sound effects, and, and it, it's just a really involved puzzle. You really do have to get these things right. You've got to manage all kinds of um, resource supplies. You know, you can't go down the lift too far. You know, I've got three passes now. Um, if you don't do it in the right sequence, you know, you're, you're basically, uh, you're scuppered. So it's really, really clever. It's really well put together. It's, it's got an excellent design to it. So not just the development of it, but the actual design as well. And that's something that you start to see with um, some of the later entries for, for the Beeb, sort of the late 80s, early 90s, um, in addition to obviously the phenomenal coding uh, that you needed to produce games like this. There was that sense of a real design to them where it wasn't just about um, you know having engaging graphics and sound and a sort of arcade experience it's also about really thinking about how to put the game together um, and in some of these games you know, games like um, like this one um, other games like uh, palace of magic you know there's a real sense of of a design to them not simply a, uh, a you know development you really did need to think about how to put these things together now some coders obviously had the uh, remarkable ability of being able to do both and i have a huge amount of respect for that um but sometimes you needed a sort of a designer's uh, input even if they weren't the ones doing sort of heavy lifting on the coding front and i think that this pairing between uh, nick chamberlain and martin edmondson really really worked well okay now we're gonna we've repeated we've been here before uh, but hopefully this time around now that i've become equipped with my key i should be able to make a bit more progress than last time but uh, we'll see i've got these excellent stomping pillars once again so stomp stomp 
and off that way. Stomp, 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 and through here. So, what is in store for us here? I think there's somebody else running around. Now, how many do you reckon we've got here? One. That's the thing, when they go running off, off screen like that, you don't know whether or not uh, there's just one or possibly two. But anyway, oh, oh goodness. <laughs> that wasn't too clever, was it? Right, let's uh, boost my energy. Oh, see, look, there was another one. Thought there was. Right, well, while he's running around, of course there is. We've been here before. I dealt with these guys last time when I was trying to get that lift pass. Okay, so let's just wait for him to come up. There we go. We've got our extra lift pass. Let's skimmy down the rope. Ah, yes, it's all coming together now. I remember this bit. So... Oops. Turned him into a skeleton. Oops. Right, time that. Time that, probably. Yeah. All right, so let's get rid of him. We'll make our way through. So uh, yes, I mean, I hopefully uh, you, you can tell from from the review so far that it really is a very very different beast to uh, the original Strikers Run. I mean, obviously the original Strikers Run also an excellent game, quite a different game. Um, it's it didn't have anywhere near the same sort of puzzle level to it. I mean, obviously yes, in Strikers Run you had the ability to pick up um, vehicles, so to speak, and uh, commandeer a vehicle to help you get through some of the trickier parts. I'm you know I'm not sure about this switch. How important is this switch, do you reckon? I should probably take it, because if I don't take it, I'll probably regret it later. So let's see. Uh, we'll just... Ooh. Those close quarters laser blaster fight fights are the worst, because you really lose a lot of energy if you're not careful. All right, now let me remember. What did we do last time? Did we go up? I think we did. How many, how many passes have I got? I've got four, and I've got my key now. Let's risk it, biscuit. Here we go. Yes. All right. Now, in theory, because I've got my key, I ought to be able to go through here, but let's see if that actually works. Goodness <laughs> gracious. Oh, I'd run, out. <laughs> I'd run out of blaster and suit energy almost. All right, let's recharge those. Well, I've got no energy so, um, left. Hey, look at that. That was the key. Perfect stuff. Well, this is territory... Uh, unknown, terra incognita. Um, I don't know if I'm going to get much further into the game at this point, but uh, we will see see where we land. Let's come down here. I'm going to deploy some some mines, I think, because oh, there's another one there we need to get. So deal with this guy. Come on, I know you're there. Another feature of the game, isn't it? Oh my goodness, it's the third one. <laughs> Um, yeah, the, the fact that the, uh, obviously it's got very good scrolling, as you've seen already, but the fact that the bad guys continue to um, sort of exist off screen, very, very clever uh, engineering there to, to, to achieve that effect. Ah, now those springs, I think if you get those, you can actually literally jump um, higher than, than the normal. Let's see. Let's prove the theory. Oh yeah, look at that! Look, that's a that's a high jump. Oh goodness. Yeah, he's 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 definitely going higher than he usually does. So now the thing about the springs is that they only work right up until you collect some other object, which means that if I was to get a lift pass or another energy cell, for example, I'd lose my springs, which means I'm not sure whether. Oh, I need those plutonium rods though, don't I? So that's my, whoop, that's the length of my jump here. Yeah, look, see, <laughs> it's cancelled out the springs already. So I suspect I've made a mistake there because I don't think I actually used the spring to um, to reach an area of the map that I hadn't uh, been able to previously reach. But, uh, well, I suppose we'll have to uh, just accept that and um, that's probably a lesson for another day. But uh, yes. There we go. I mean, that is, in effect, Codename Droid. Um, I mean, I've got a few more lift passes, so I can probably pop down back to uh, the crew's quarters here, but uh, I don't think we're going to get uh, too much further into the game at this stage. Hopefully that's given you a taste, a taste of what the game is all about. Um, 
And uh, yeah, it's a really, really excellent game, thoroughly deserving of its place in at number five, I think you'd have to agree. Um, a worthy successor, I suppose we could say, to Striker's Run, um, and a game very much in its own right. So there you go, the fantastic Codename Droid. Now I'm going to kill myself at this point and let the uh, fantastic music of Codename Droid play us out. So I'm going to kill myself and we will see on a rating of fair and the score of 98,000. So not terrible, but also, also I didn't really get that far into the game. So there you go. Um, so I'm going to leave it there and say I hope you've enjoyed uh, this review of Codename Droid. I um, hope it's been a, a, a game that you've uh, enjoyed reminiscing about. And if you've never played it before, which I'd struggle to believe, but nevertheless, if you've never played it before, please do uh, seek it out and give it a try because it is well worth, uh, well worth it. It's a great, great game. So there you go. I um, hope you'll join me for the next video in the series. But until then, goodbye.